Right, this is going to be an attempt to show you how to do a splice in um, octoplat rope. Uh, octoplat rope is an eight strand rope. It's a lovely rope for anchoring, it's very stretchy. This is polyester, but often it's in, in nylon. Um, it's best with this kind of rope to just flake it down into a bag, so it's great for kedge anchors and things. You can just have a canvas bag, throw the anchor over the side and the rope comes out and flops in nicely. But to splice it is a little bit tricky. Um, so we're going to show how to do a, a splice in octoplat. It's partly tricky because you don't often splice octoplat rope. It's nearly always three strand you're dealing with. So um, uh, you tend to forget what you've done the last time. Now, although this rope isn't a three strand rope, it is still handed and it's very important that you get to know your kind of left hand and your right hand because um, it's a bit like country dancing this, you've got to pair up and swirl them around in the right direction. And as the caller said at the country dance at the weekend, um, said take the partners by the left hand and when there was a huge mess on the dance floor he then said to the gentleman in question he said no your other left hand which I thought was quite a polite way of telling him the best done. So we're gonna achieve one of these in this piece of rope you don't need many tools you, you might be able to manage it without a fid um, it, to begin with you will be able to but it gets tighter and tighter as you go along so you might regret not having got the fit out of the garage before you start. Um, I've finished this splice off with a hot knife. I'm out in the field at the moment so I haven't got a hot knife but um, you, you could whip the ends or you can cut it with a hot knife which could be just heated up on a kitchen stove or you could have a nice electric one. So first thing we need to do is just understand how the rope's made. So um, a left, this is my left hand, <laughs> might look like you, my right hand to you, but it's my left hand. So when I put the rope in, in my hand, you can see these strands are pointing towards my thumb on my left hand. So these are left-handed strands going off here. And if I move it around just one little turn, we'll see these are going the opposite way. So these, these strands marry up with my right hand. And I know what you're thinking, you think if I turn that around, they're going to change, but they don't. They still marry up. They're very clever stuff, right? So you've basically got a left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. And it's important you understand that because we're going to get a country dancing with this rope in a minute. So the first thing you need to do, undo the um, ends of the rope and then take your partners. And your partners need to be the same hand. So don't get them muddled up. And you can kind of see that these two are together. So just take those up. When you're doing these kind of splices, it's best to not have too many interruptions because you can forget where you are. So turn your phone off. Unless if you're watching this on your phone, don't turn it off because that'll really mess you up. Don't to put too much tape on because you could take it all off in a mess. Right, so now we've got four strands coming out the end. So we've got uh, left hands, and then we've got right hands, etc, etc. Now we need to stop this, as you can see it unravels very easily, this rope's not kind of very heat set, so 
if you're not careful it'll kind of unwind too far. <coughs> if you go back about 200, 250 mil, that'll be ample for doing your splash. You don't want to be too short because um, nothing worse than getting almost at the end of a splash and realising you haven't got enough tails. It's also good to have a little bit of tail left to tug on. So I'm just putting a, a stopper down there. This is 16 mil this right down. Should be kind of size would be good for anchor for a kind of 30 foot boat or 25 foot boat. Maybe. Right, so there are my four strands. They've still, you know, got the remnants of the twist in them. Now I need to decide how big to make the eye. I need to be careful here because these eyes will get smaller um, as, you, as you work on the splice. So if, if you need to make an eye for a specific size, say a 10 inch eye to go with a 10 inch cleat or something, um, make it about two diameters of the rope bigger up the inside because it seems to whenever I do them it, it this closes up as you tug as you tug the splice together. Now so as not to waste any rope or time I'm actually doing a job here. So and these these are meant to be 135 on the inside of the uh, of the loop. So I'm gonna make them 135 plus a couple of diameters of the rope. That makes them about 170. These are hand holes, so if I'd made them, if I'd done that loop at 135 and it closed up, it would be a bit of a nightmare because you wouldn't get your hand through. You'll never get anything dead accurate with this stuff because it stretches. So there's my eye. Two diameters of the rope bigger on the internal just to take into account for where it um, closes up as you do the splice. Now, as always with splices, these first tucks are the, um, the ones you've got to, got to get right and um, it can be a bit confusing. So you've got that's one hand, that's the other hand. You can see they're going off in opposite directions. That one's left, that one's right. So that's a pair. We'll keep them on the top of the rope and those two go underneath. Now what you've got to do is you've got to put a right hand twisted rope under a right hand twisted rope and a left hand under a left hand. So it doesn't really matter which one you start with. Obviously you need to make a tuck fairly close to where you put your tape on otherwise the size is going to change. So this one here is a right hand and this down here is the right hand laying the rope. Be careful because your rope might be twisted or something. So get, make sure you get your kind of roads nice and straight. Right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand, all the way down there. And this is right hand. So I'm going to go in here. And I don't go that way down the rope. I go kind of up the rope. So I'm going in at right angles into that piece there. Um, I'm going to use... Swedish fid, even though I don't need to. Where's my right hand? Right on. That's the right hand. I'll make sure you take the right part of this right hand. So it's going in there. <coughs> so you can see how it's, it's going in at right angles in that direction. So now this one here, this is my left hand. I'll have to do this, and you can see. In the left hand, these pointing out towards my thumb. So I'm going to turn this rope over again, and I discover that that's that's a left-hand road going down there. Boom, 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 boom. So I need to go in, um, same kind of close to this as I can, and I also still need to go in into the um, kind of up the rope. So I'm not going down that way. Go up, up that way. So I'll just, just open that up again. So this is 
both strands left hand going under both strands left hand. Whoops. Oh, just caught things in there. That's a bit of a ball. And that happens a bit. Okay, that's it. Okay, don't worry, it'll look like a bit of a mess for me. <clears throat> so I'll turn it over now. So again, you can see that one there is right hand. So I need to find a right hand. That's the right hand there. So this one needs to go in there. And then the last remaining one, I hope we got this right. So that's the left hand, that's left hand there. It's a bit twisted, so it's left hand, left hand, all down there. So I need to go in, I don't want to go in that one, go in that one there. It's as close as I can get. Just open it up a little bit. Hey, right, so now, <clears throat> just have a look at the rope and just make sure they're coming up. They'll never be at exactly the same level, but you, you can kind of see that they're, um, yeah, roughly the same level. There'll be one above and one below, one above and one below, coming out, same kind of side. Now, I take off this tape at this stage. I'm going to have a little bit of a kind of tug and a sort out just to try and make sure everything's sitting as neatly as I can. Now you can see it's got a lot of twists in it before it goes through so I don't think it makes any difference to the strength of the rope but sometimes it's a good idea just to tidy that up so there's a don't worry if you can't see this you'll see it on that. Mm -hmm. That's it. so I've just I've just kind of untwisted that so it's it just looks a little bit neater coming from there to there. Um, What's this one here doing? This one here looks quite neat, just coming up there. What's this one doing? This is coming through this way. I'm just going to take that twist down this. That looks quite nice and neat going through there. This is my last one. This looks like a bit of a mess, doesn't it? So I'm just going to put that on the other side there. Always one, isn't there? Always one. Country dancing. Okay. <clears throat> it doesn't. I don't think this is critical. It's just it looks a bit neater when you get a bit further down the line that you tidy those up. Now it doesn't matter where you start. But so just undo one of these pairs. And I do one at a time, I just find it gets a bit confusing if you want to do the whole lot, you've got loads of bits of rope flapping around. So this is all we're dealing with. It's quite early on a Sunday morning with the traffic's building up as the sun is out. Everyone's going to the coast to get to the boats. Of course the thing is this this is a right hand rope. Uh, sorry, it's the left hand rope. As you can see, it's my left hand going out towards the thumb. But each of these strands actually goes the other way, they all go out that way. So, the rope's always made like that with contrary. So, the left hand strand gets right hand around that way. In any case, that's not of any concern. We, we now undo this rope. So, now what we've got to do is find. So this is the left hand um, piece that's gone under. So we need to find the rest 
to see. What's that one doing there? Yeah. Get the tidy up, right. So it's gone under this left hand one here. So my next left hand one, let's pull the rope out, is this one here. Left hand, left hand, left hand. Left hand. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put. See, this is nearest me, this one's furthest away. So we can open up. Can open up the next double, the next kind of double piece. Bring the fit back. Just take the single piece and then go through with the left hand lay. Now it, you might want to put just a little, see, just a little twist in there because the rope kind of unlays a little bit. So this just helps put it back into place. Then I'm going to go back into the other partner there with my other piece, put a little twist in it. Go through there. Right now we're on a bit of a roll. We've got those through. So that was the one we went through with both of them. And now we're split. We've gone through there, split out the left, out the right. And we're going to go through this one. Boom, boom. So that's one, two, three, four. You could do it with three, you could do it with five. I don't think there's any real rules. In this case, we're going to do it with four because if you put too many on, it doesn't particularly work for this job. So that's through the first one. That's through the second one. You can see this is live time video, and you can see it's going to take a few minutes to do this because we've got to do all of these. Right? So, there we go. And then, so that's two. Three, back, get one. And then the last one in this case. Okay, okay so we've braided this all the way down here, so that's our first one I've done. <coughs> that was looking rather nice. Now, I'm doing another one. I don't think it matters which order you do these in. So again, undo these strands. Okay, so you can see. Boom, boom. So there's the two strands coming out under there, and this is a right hand. So on my right hand, they're all going that way. So, so this is where we're going up here. Boom. So we'll be coming out here next to these. So we've gone under there with the double, so we need to go under here at this angle, open these two up, pull it back, open one up, take the left hand one, sorry, take the right hand one, draw left hand one, right hand one. It's just like a country dancing, isn't it? <coughs> okay, yeah. Up. Off you go again. Mm. Uh, 
you can see you get a little bit faster this as time goes on. Oops. Just back into it. Done. Nice. So here's the next one. This is the left hand one. This is the left hand. <coughs> Again, so here we go. There's the two strands going under the same lay direction coming out here. Get this road nice and straight up here. That, that might be kind of it can get confusing if the rope's kind of twisted up, so just make sure it's all nice and straight. So I've got the right hand, I've got the left hand. We go in here again at right angles up the rope. Pull it back. Stick one in. If you haven't got a Swedish fit, you can do, you can kind of do this with your hands, but when you start getting onto the fourth one, it, it gets pretty tough. decided to do this video at this time early on a Sunday morning because we're off to the boat but we have to wait to pay the man for the car park for the parking overnight so I've got an hour to spare and some good light. Tug, yeah. Right, and um, our last one. We're going well so far. Oops. I quite like my um, <coughs> Octoplatin polyester because it tends to last longer than nylon, and although it's less stretchy is something you quite want for anchor lines. It, um, with this construction it still stretches really enough. Polyester doesn't get weaker when it gets wet. Nylon loses 10% of its strength when it gets wet. Um, so I just find it a bit more reliable really as a rope. So here we go, here's the last one. <coughs> so here's my little road down here in between all my braided ones. So there's divide them up like that and have to come in this way. Feel that's quite tight now. I think you've struggled to do that with your fingers. Just 
interest in it. Essential things I'm doing, not for a boat, it's for a magic show. <coughs> and they're wrist looms. Some flies across the stage using them. There now, it's just a bit of um, settling in, tightening the thing up. So, just by the way, that, that eye I was hoping to get to about 135 internal. So, there you go, 135. So, that's come down, that's, you know, that was about that big. But, um, <coughs> so as with all splices, it's good to try and get the tension in all of the strands about the same. You can do this by rolling in your hand, if you've got too many deck shoes on, you can roll them under your foot on the deck, if you can roll them under your knee, and then um, you just give them all a tug up. Keep in that. Yeah. Any case, there you go. That's the um, that's how you do an ice ice in. Octopat rope. I mean, at, at the end here, you can um, join these together and whip them with a West Country whipping. Um, or in in my case, I've just taken them off with a with a hot knife. And you can taper that splice up a bit if you want to. Yeah. So that's it. No thanks.